Hi, and welcome to Lois and Morgana Davidson Art. It's Lois here, and today I'm going to be showing you how I painted this impressionistic um, loose watercolour misty woodland. If you look closer here, you can see that I've got these really pretty effects by using um, fine table salt just placed into the damp wash which gives us some lovely effects suggestive of the sort of ov overgrown weeds and plants around the base of the trees in this lovely misty wood. This is the photograph from Pixabay that I have used as inspiration. Um, I'll leave the link below. The first thing that I did was to very loosely sketch out the position of my trees and the directionality of them, slightly leaning from bottom left up towards top right um, on my paper in faint pencil. I'm using Milford cold pressed water, watercolour paper. It's cotton. Um, it's 11 inches by 15 inches. Um, or 28 centimetres by 38 centimetres. Um, I've wet the page all over and this is a mixture of indigo and lavender. I'm painting this wet in wet using a Princeton Aqua Elite synthetic mottler brush. It's a larger flat brush and it's really useful for quickly placing on the paint. So I'm sort of putting it in sort of stripes, sort of vertical, but slightly angled towards the top, darker on each side, lighter in the middle, to try to capture the light um, in the misty distance of this woodland. And with my slightly uneven brush strokes already, you can see I'm trying to sort of get the indication of where the trees will be um, coming up from the ground. Now this is the ground plane, again quickly painted in wet in wet, and I'm using perylene green, sap green, and I shall dip into some indigo and sepia as well. And just to randomly place it onto the wet page, so I get all these lovely soft diffusions of colour, and the colour will blend together a little bit on the page. So here I'm trying to create my misty distance, and of course um, my ground plane. I'm using plenty of paint here, sort of building it up and putting it on in quite a sort of a seemingly haphazard way, but there's method to my madness. I'm trying to make sure that as the paint dries and as it dries back, it'll dry lighter, that I'm getting some hints and suggestions of distant trees. This is my dagger brush. Um, it's a pro art small dagger brush and it holds a lot of paint. You can see it gives me these lovely fine lines. And if I use this with um, just pulling the paint that's already on the page and using a little bit more of these brown colors um, through the wet wash, it will softly diffuse. Some of them will sort of fade back to nothing, but it's giving me again, more of these distant tree um, hints. I can put, use stronger paint just to kind of mark out the position for some of my stronger trees, my foreground trees, but they will all just soften back. And please notice the directionality here, this slight lean that I've got towards the right. And I think this is what really helps to give this painting a sort of dynamic look. And next, I'm going to use the corner of a plastic store card, or you could use your fingernail or the end of a paintbrush um, or a palette knife to scrape some light trunks through the paint, revealing the white paper underneath. I forgot to mention that my board is at an angle of about 45 degrees and gravity has actually helped me with the painting because if you have a slight slope to your board, then of course the paint and the wet washes will drift and soften and diffuse as they dry. And once I'm happy with the marks that I've made and the way the wash is drying, I can strengthen up the foreground a bit more um, using the same colors and then preparing it for taking a sprinkle of salt. If you use table salt to create effects, you have to leave your wash until it's 
just starting to dry. If it's too wet, you won't get any effects. If it's too dry, you won't get any effects. And this can be a bit tricky, so I would suggest practicing on a sheet of paper with some thick wet paint on it and set a timer and then just um, throw the salt in at different intervals and see which effects work the best and which ones you prefer. Um, the reason for this is because every single one of you will have different conditions, i.e. heat or cold in your studio area, um, the humidity, everything like that affects the way the salt works. So if you do testing in your workspace, then you're more likely to achieve successful results. Um, I'm now leaving this to dry completely. And please note, I've laid my board flat while it dries um, and this means the washes and the salt won't move too far they will just stay where they are and gently dry and soften and diffuse so here it is it's all dried back really nicely i've brushed any surplus remaining salt off of the painting um, with a clean dry brush and now i'm going to strengthen up some of the um, the mid-ground trees to start with, again using my dagger brush or sword liner, I think they're more commonly known as, and I think this one actually is officially called a sword liner, and it's by Pro Art. Um, it's a size small. The long flexible synthetic hairs will hold a lot of paint, inky consistency and the tip is really fine so I can get these nice fine lines in and um, continuing to follow the directionality of um, a slight lean from bottom left to top right. Um, I can start to just get in the impression of my trees. It's at this point, I'm not really referring to the photograph anymore. Um, the painting has sort of taken on a life of its own. I know exactly where I'm going with it now, which is to enhance the underpainting that I've just produced wet in wet with some slightly harder edged marks like this. Um, but these mid-ground trees are all fairly fine. Uh, once I've got a few of them in across the painting and dabbing out any marks that are a little bit too dark or too thick then I can begin to put in some the heavier foreground trees but firstly I need to make sure that the background has been painted um, so if you think about it really what we're doing is with the very first washes the wet and wet washes we're painting um, the background and the base for the foreground. So now it's the mid-ground and then the final details that will be painted will of course be the foreground um, and the, the details that we want the viewer to sort of focus on, the centre of interest so to speak. At this stage, you can take your time because we're working with wet paint onto a dry painting um, and so there isn't really any time constraint. When we're working wet in wet, it's best to work fairly quickly because the paper is slowly drying as we paint and we want it to stay wet, so quick painting at the beginning and then more considered painting on top, which is where we really try and bring out the detail and the beauty of the painting. And I hope you see that I've left the area in the sort of between the, the gap in the trees um, much lighter and less detailed. And if you look closely, the salt details are really pretty. Um, they really are giving us that kind of pretty impression of the forest floor. And as this is a loose, impressionistic painting, um, I'm not looking to be painting realistic detail, but I'm hoping that all the marks that I put together here with the wet in wet, the salt effects, the scraped marks um, with the card and the painted marks will all come together and give me the loose impression of this um, atmospheric woodland scene. So now I'm starting to work on the um, foreground trees um, and these are slightly um, thicker trunked 
and so I've got um, a small round um, Da Vinci spin synthetic um, quill brush and I'm painting in the trunks slightly darker in the shadows at the top and some of the stronger branches of these foreground trees. Um, I shall bring in this sort of dark colour which is a mixture of indigo, uh, perylene green and a bit of the sap green and um, a little bit of the brown as well, the sepia, um, and then change up the hue slightly and the tone. If things get too dark, I can just dab out a bit of variety with my um, paper towel or a tissue, but hopefully you can see, I'm trying to build up some texture on the bark, just of a few of these trees. And if I have a few of these trees looking a little bit more realistic and slightly more detailed, then they should enable the viewer to um, see the rest of the marks that I've made as mid-ground and distant trees. So we are definitely on the um, final stages of the painting, uh, just creating the bark textures and the finer branches um, and the darker shadows of these Im more important focus trees, the focal point or the point of interest. Again, if I put them in sort of just all in the same tone, uh, they could look a little bit boring or a little bit too regular. So as soon as I've painted the brush stroke, I go in with the tissue and um, just lift off a tiny bit gently so that I'm getting some variety to the tone. But the tissue is also giving me a little bit of texture on the bark, not too much, but just enough to, um, as I say, add that little bit of variety of the light just catching the trees that are still in a bit of shadow. And then picking out a few details on some of the mid-ground trees in the same way, but keeping the lines much finer, knocking back any paint that I need to. Back to the dagger brush, and I can put in, um, just continue to work on these finer branches. Um, I want the um, leaning um, fine branches on the left to sort of link with the branches on the right and create a sort of almost a tunnel over that light area of misty forest. But I don't want to overdo it, so I'm working quite slowly um, to create the effect uh, that I'm looking for. And then to strengthen up some of the marks that I scraped into the ground plane uh, with some darker grasses sticks and twigs, this sort of thing, in the foreground. So this is the sort of balancing act at the end of just bringing the painting together with small subtle marks here and there just to finish things off. And I think I'm just about finished, so um, to check, I'm going to remove the tape. Uh, once I remove the tape and re reveal the clean white border, um, it gives me the chance to look at the painting with fresh eyes and I can check the balance of the composition, the balance of the tonal values, um, and just make sure that everything's looking okay. And then I can make any final adjustments that I need to. And in this case, I'm going to warm up the two trunks on the um, left slightly with a little touch of raw sienna. And then looking at the painting against um, a clean white background, um, again, I can now see, having walked away from it for a while, I can see that I need to strengthen up and link over just a few more really fine branches. So I'm carefully painting these in with my sword liner brush in order to sort of frame that area of um, light and mist in the distance perhaps the hint of a clearing in the forest. Uh, 
and I'm quite happy with that. So here's the finished painting. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching that as much as I enjoyed painting it. Um, I'm really pleased with this and I hope you'll give something similar like this a go. So thank you so much for watching. Please leave us a like um, and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Morgana will be back um, with another beautiful painting for you on Monday and I'll see you again on Wednesday. And finally, a huge thanks to all my wonderful supporters on Patreon who make this channel possible. So I'll see you soon and happy painting. Bye.